Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, did you get your COVID shot yet? Uh, so we'll talk about the pens and more. So let's dive into the pens. Alright, so these are the pens I've been using through this week. I have the Aurora 88 Vintage Edition. I have a Noodler's Conrad. I have a Lamy 99. I have a Noodler's Ahab. I have a Visconti Mirage, Lamy Artist Prince, Visconti Homo Sapiens, Pilot E95S, a Delta Dolce Vita Masterpiece, and Senator Silver Fox. Those are air quotes. So, let's see how these write. As always, I'll be doing this in my Cognitive Surplus Notebook, a seafood flavored edition. So my first pen for this week I inked up an Aurora 88 uh, vintage version. I absolutely love this model. Uh, it's been way too long since I've used one, so I thought it was time. Uh, I actually have two of these. This, this one has the better of the two nibs. I don't know if that means anything. And then you uncap it, and of course, here's that beautiful nib. But it doesn't look like much. No, it doesn't. What matters is what happens on the page. So this is an Aurora 88 vintage. The ink in it is one of my uh, favorites that is no longer made. Montegrappa Bordeaux. Uh, Montegrappa chose to head in the direction of more saturated inks and uh, you know, inks like this one were just out of luck. So I've got uh, part of this bottle, and I did buy one other bottle before it totally disappeared. But, uh, yeah, when it's gone, it's gone. But what a beautiful ink. You know, and, and that's the thing with uh, some of these inks you get. You find your favorites, then they discontinue them, or they change them, or whatever. Uh, another one I like is Sailor Epinard, and uh, Sailor discontinued it, brought it back, and now they've discontinued it again. So, you know, you kind of have that hope that maybe one of these days they'll bring it back again, but on the other hand, you don't just hoard it and think, well, I don't dare use it, because it's not like I can get any more, because then what's the point of having it if you don't use it? So... I guess you find other inks you like. And it's not like most of us are using up bottle after bottle anyway. I uh, Black, yes. Any other color? Eh, not so much. My next pen is a Noodler's Conrad with the John Mung finish. Uh, I think this is my only white pen. And yeah, I'm using the Noodler's Flex Nib for... Better for worse. Uh, Noodler's pens are um, finicky. Uh, sometimes when they work, they work beautifully, and then other times you get one, you're just like, oh boy. Or it's the same pen, and you've just gotten it slightly out of adjustment, and you're just, oh boy. But I found by using Noodlers, I learned a lot about how pens work. I also found, as I've learned other pens, I don't use the Noodlers nearly as often. You know, make of that what you will. Oh, what's this in the ink? Well, if you were paying attention last week, I had a Italian invasion. <laughs> um, apparently, a uh, Italian YouTuber decided to send his uh, fan club over to my channel. Uh, because of my use of this ink and my threat to use it in an Italian fountain pen. So hopefully I can get away with using it in this, well, rebranded Indian fountain pen. Uh, I just think the color is so pretty. 
And yeah, the original formulation of Private Reserve did have some real problems. Uh, I had a bottle of Burgundy Mist that developed several glops of slime. Uh, I, I described it as snot in the comments, but we'll be more polite here. And then uh, like a forest of mold. So <laughs> no way I'm putting that in a pen. Uh, but that's the only bottle I've ever had that did that. And uh, overall, I've had good luck with them. Uh, I find that sometimes they can be a little slow drying. I have a letter laying over there. I wrote with this pen that, you know, the periods and so on in the letter were not drying. So it needed like a extra 30 minutes or so to dry on that Tomoe River paper. But uh, nothing like noodlers, because sometimes those noodlers inks just make me crazy because you're just like, just dry. Why is it two days later and you're not dry yet? How is this physically possible? So uh, anyway, um, I've had better luck with Private Reserve in that respect. But Noodlers has some fun colors, so uh, I can't quite quit them yet. Uh, this is a, a pen I have not had out in a while. This is a Lamy 99 slash 36 because it has both. Can you see that? has both written on the barrel here and it has an oblique fine nib and a L. Um, I think parts of this design are predecessors to the Lamy 2000 which is another pen I have not inked up in a while so maybe it's time to pull that puppy out too. So this is Lamy and you know some of these websites like uh, Dan Smith the Nib Smith yeah here's Last time I bought a pen from him, here's one of his stickers. Um, doesn't really, I mean, I guess he wouldn't say no, but he doesn't offer oblique or any of the other kinds of grinds with the fine. You can do it, but, you know, he thinks you get better results. And you're right, with a broader nib, the obliqueness is more visible. But, uh, I don't know, it, it does add a special character to this pen. And this ink, of course, is uh, one I really like. I, I bought a package of uh, four Colorverse inks. Two of them I really like. Two of them are just kind of eh. And uh, one, I did finally empty the bottle to the point that I couldn't use it anymore. So everything is now in one of those Paniter inkwells. Uh, I've got about six mils of Jupiter Flyby left. So uh, as long as I can keep filling pens with it, I will. But... You know, I'm looking forward to getting to that same point here because it is so satisfying to take a bottle out of that ink drawer and say, oh, that's one less bottle. So, uh, yeah, I've been working on mostly the smaller targets. You know, getting rid of this bottle. Well, I'll replace it with the other one that I have. But, um, you know, still, it's just one less bottle in the collection. And, uh, you know, I've been very good with not buying ink. And uh, I plan to continue that because uh, I want that ink collection to shrink. So, uh, yeah, goals. <laughs> First world problems. This one, uh, this pen will probably not be here next week. This is a Noodler's Ahab. Um, another one like the Conrad. This pen is actually a very good Noodler's pen. It just... Uh, you know, the Ahab isn't my favorite Noodler's model. So, Noodler's Ahab. And the ink in it is Noodler's. Kung to Chung. Which is apparently based on a imperial ink from back when China had a emperor and all that. So, I, you know, it's a nice color and it's actually uh, very well behaved on even on cheap paper. It's just kind of a bugger to clean out of a pen, which is why this is the only pen it ever goes into. My, um, my next pen really should have 
you know, that private reserve tanzanite in it, but I've got a German ink in it for now. Apparently this doesn't upset the Italians as much as putting an American ink in it, but whatever. This is the uh, Visconti Mirage. It kind of has that floaty look like, oh, I haven't quite capped it. Whoops, I can't cap it any further. You know, I, I, that was an intentional design choice, I guess, to make it look like the cap's floating above the pen. I like, you know, it's got these divots in it, and I like that they're aligned. That's a nice touch. I've got another Visconti that will be reviewed next week because enough of you guessed what it was from my little preview of the finial. The, okay, secret's out. Um, that I wish was as well aligned as this one. And this is one of their lower cost offerings, which, you know, for Visconti isn't saying much. Visconti Mirage. And the ink in it is Pelican 4001 Violet. I have two inks that are called, well, I guess three. Doggone, you know, I haven't inked up, used the other one in a long time. I've got this one, I've got a Califolio Violet, and now that I think about it, I have a Dea Trementis Violet ink too. So, maybe one of these days I'll have to do a Violet Showdown or something. I've got other filming plans planned for this weekend. Uh, I've got an April Fool's video, you're just going to have to wait, uh, that I plan to film tomorrow. And, uh, I don't know, I, I might do a pen repair video during this break. Uh, I've also, or instead I may just film, batch film a whole bunch of pen first impressions. I've got a <laughs> an alarming number here already repaired and ready to go. I just, um, today for, for a small win, I, I got a few other pens ready. They, they didn't need any exciting repair. They just needed cleaning and oh baby, did the one need cleaning and it looked so pristine. I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to have to do anything for this at all. But you know, I didn't really know the source. So I thought, Oh, I should probably clean it. And wow, did the ink come out of that pen and it looked perfect. So, uh. Yeah, it's soaking right now because the ink continues to pour out of it, even though it flushes clear. So sometimes soaking is your friend. It gets in all those little nooks and crannies. Uh, this is a Lamy Artist Prince. Ooh, you probably didn't see most of that. There we go. This is a Lamy Artist Prince, which is a their student, apparently their student line. They they purchased the artist company. Um, I've decided I'm going to make it my mission to use up this particular bottle of black ink. Uh, the ink in it is Califolio Noir. It's just kind of an underwhelming black. I would take Parker, I would take Pelican, I would take Lamy, uh, any of them over this one. I'm just not impressed by this one. It, it looks more like a dark gray. And, you know, I've evolved. I used to want a really blackety black black. Uh, now I'm more open to more nuanced types of blacks. But still, it's just... Ugh. You know, to be fair, it is vintage friendly, but so is Parker, so is Lamy, so is Pelican. So, you know, not much reason to use this one. My next pen is a Visconti Homo Sapiens. I have no idea if I'll still be using this pen next week, but I was looking at it. Uh, it's definitely, the, the brass on it is definitely starting to show some tarnish and some age which I like. I know some people will want to keep it shiny, but uh, no, I want the tarnish. I think it's kind of cool looking. It's that whole wabi-sabi thing, even though it's not a Japanese pen. Uh, hook latch system. Oh, I had to do a tiger eye because the original finial fell out, but that's okay. It, again, that's maybe part of that wabi-sabi <laughs> aesthetic. And uh, the nib is one of their uh, palladium nibs, which apparently they have phased out and they're going back to gold. 
But for all the faults I heard about palladium nibs, this is the only one I ever used. And this is a used pen. But I think it works great. Viscante Homo sapiens. You know, filling it from that Paniter Inkwell does suggest that I may have actually gotten a full fill with it. Because this is that color verse. Jupiter Flyby. And I am kind of, uh, you know, I like this ink a lot because I really enjoy the color change. But I do kind of want to use it up. And not only, you know, the, the original bottle is useless. I washed it out this afternoon. Um, I kind of want to use up that uh, Paniter and uh, get, you know, something else that's almost running out into that Paniter inkwell. It's, uh, it's just such a satisfying feeling to use up a bottle of ink. And I get that several times a year with black. Just not with these other colors, so, uh, I want that experience, doggone it. My next pen is a Pilot E95S. Beautiful pocket pen. And a very good writer. You know, most of my pocket pens I don't care for as, uh, for long writing sessions. This one I actually like. But Pilot makes very quality writing instruments also. And the ink in it is just plain old ordinary Pilot Blue. Which is a nice bright blue. And I'm noticing that it doesn't have that uh, sort of a formal... Oh, my neighbor... Well, he can't be mowing yet. I don't know if you can hear it. Because I turned the gain down on the microphone just as an experiment with sound quality. Oh, his dog just ran away too. Huh. Well, that's awkward. The dog ran across the street and uh, he's out there mowing his lawn. But he's not mowing. I'm pretty sure he's using the mower. It's a riding lawn mower to pick up leaves and stuff. I suppose eventually he'll figure out that the dog disappeared. It is now... Oh, it just peed in the neighbor's yard. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't do a riding lawnmower myself. I, uh, I don't bag grass clippings. I don't do any of that. I've got an old-fashioned reel-type mower, and it's good enough for my yard. And uh, I leave the grass clippings where they are, and theoretically they provide fertilizer. Um, I benefit from a, not this neighbor... I benefit from a different neighbor providing me with his grass clippings and you know about once a year he has to fertilize his lawn and okay uh, admittedly his lawn is uh much more golf course like than mine but whatever <laughs> i'm the neighbor nobody wants you're driving down the property values of your stupid little house sorry all right delta dolce vita masterpiece I bought this after the Delta Company went out of business. I was really surprised to find it at a good price. I don't know what that means, but it was at a good price. It has one of their fusion nibs, which is one of their last gasp gimmicks to like, look, we, we can do cool, innovative stuff, man. Uh, <laughs> Delta. This pen will probably not be here next week because uh, it is running on fumes. Delta Dolce Vita Masterpiece. In fact, if I had used it in uh, one of my letters this morning, it probably would be empty now. The ink in it is a Roshizuku. Yuyake. Which is a very nice orange. And Roshizuku makes some very nice colors. And I kind of like their overall theme of doing the colors of Japan. You know, I thought, I'm not interested in pursuing it and, you know, who'd buy it. But, you know, I've always thought it'd be fun to do, if somebody else did it, an ink series of colors of North Dakota. 
Or, you know, if I move back east, the colors of Pennsylvania or whatever. But, uh, what is it? Sailor, I think, is doing uh, inks. Like, each bottle, each color will be themed on a particular state. So I'm, I will admit, I'm a little curious what color they're going to pick for North Dakota. Will it be a nice yellow for the sunflowers? Will it be a nice brown for the wheat? Will it be black because of uh, how the oil industry has basically taken over our state? You know, what's it going to be? Uh, my last pen this week is a fun daily writer. Uh, this is what I call the Senator Silver Fox because I don't know the model name for most of my senators. And it turns out I haven't written with any senators in a while, so I figured it's time to whip one out. Why not the president? I don't know. I felt like whipping out the silver fox. So, Senator Silver Fox. And I, th I think the ink, the, the nib on it is either a fine or an extra fine. We'll go with fine. And the ink in it is Pelican 4001 Royal Blue, which apparently you can use an ink eradicator on it. And uh, one of the videos I want to film this weekend, I just got to find some cloth I can sacrifice. I want to experiment with uh, some of the washable and not washable inks and just see if there's a difference between them. So I've got a ripped up bed sheet. I'm, I'm going to rip it up further. I'm going to test it, uh, test these different inks on it, and uh, we'll just see what happens. You know, I can compare wash Parker washable blue to Parker regular blue. Uh, I don't have anything to compare, oops, to, compare to this. I've got the permanent Parker Blue Black and the regular Parker Blue Black. I have, I think I'm going to do the Pilot Blue just because. And I'll take a look at what else I have. I may see something else in my collection. I'm like, yeah, that should be part of that. So we'll see. But anyway, those are the pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So to answer the question I started out the video with, um, yeah, I got my COVID shot this week. Uh, I actually got it yesterday because today is Friday. I got it on Thursday and, uh, you know, I was worried about side effects and things, but, uh, cause I, I heard some people got really sick after getting it. Nothing. My arm is a little sore here where I got the injection. That's about it. So, uh, hopefully the vaccine is working its magic. And in a few weeks I get to go back for shot number two and, uh, hope for the best. So a few weeks after that, I should be a little bit safer and, uh, you know, if enough people do that, then we are good. Uh, one interesting thing that I discovered in this week's Dickinson Tribune, no, Dickinson Press, sorry, it's Bismarck Tribune. This week's Dickinson Press, which is the newspaper in our nearest city. Um, I'll even show you the headline here. 45% of uh, nurse, North Dakota nursing home staff have chosen to go unvaccinated. They were some of those frontline workers that had the first shot at it, and uh, this kind of surprises me. But the article does delve into some explanation. You know, one thing it notes is that 90% of nursing home residents did get vaccinated. You know, again, there I'm not sure what percentage of them had much choice, but uh, you know, they're an elderly population that's more at risk of the side effects of the virus. Whereas, apparently, a lot of the nursing home staff are on the younger side, so they're just like, whatever. And, uh, you know, there were comments about, well, I just don't know if it's safe. And, uh, you know, they're medical people, but uh, I felt pretty safe with this one. I'll just be honest. So, uh, and, and, you know, here in the United States, we have this anti-vax culture where my little feelers about vaccines are just as valid as your science. Uh, and uh, I don't know how you get around that. You know, some, there were a few people a few years ago who were just putting out there that, you know, vaccines cause autism and all that kind of nonsense. And uh, evidence, peer reviewed studies, forget that. It's, a, it's all about the feelings, man. 
So, uh, yeah, I'm disappointed. And, you know, I had to sign up for a specific time for this shot. But I will say they were not very busy there because they were giving shots, what, every five minutes. You, you could schedule it. Because it doesn't take long. I mean, you, you answer one or two questions as you go in. You sit down. They give you a jab. And uh, then you wait for 15 minutes. And, uh, yeah, they were definitely not busy. Maybe it was the time of day I went, but uh, I was disappointed. I I really expected to see a much larger group there, but it is southwest North Dakota after all. This is Trump territory, and uh, there's a lot of people that think the whole virus is a hoax and are very militant about it. You know, as teachers we were warned, do not get into arguments over the virus. <laughs> And uh, it's true because, yeah, the, there are people that, you know, my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge, you know. Uh, you can't fight that. I don't know how you do. So I put a couple of links down below. I'm not going to go through them all. It's just a little bit too much. Uh, but a couple of them I just thought were interesting. You know, I haven't done a driving video in a while but one of the things especially my European viewers remark on is the number of pickups and trucks that are on the road here and yeah uh, for a lot of people pickups have become the new family car now do you need a pickup most of the time nope uh, once in a while I've wished I had a pickup you know when I want to haul something but for the most part my Toyota Camry does just fine and uh but a lot of people buy pickups and uh so i've got an article down there about the evolution of a pickup and basically they have evolved from being a utilitarian vehicle used by working people to being um like i said a family car extended cabs four doors on them uh all kinds of luxury appointments inside uh <laughs> there's a ford dealer that advertises in the local paper every week downtown a lot of their Ford pickups cost more than my house. Not even exaggerating. So, uh, yeah, it's a that was I just found that a very interesting one. Another one I thought was interesting was uh, you are a completely different person at seventy-seven than you are at fourteen, which shouldn't come as a surprise. But. Uh, you know, we always look at ourselves as fairly steady state. You know, we'll, we'll admit that, oh yeah, I used to be more liberal, or oh yeah, I used to be more conservative, or, you know, things like that. But uh, we actually undergo a total personality change over that time. And there was a long-term study, you know, a 63-year study, that looked at that. And uh, I, I, I don't know why it surprised me, it just did. So uh, I know I'm not teenage squirrel. Uh, teenage squirrel, squirrel would probably be kind of disappointed with who 45-year-old squirrel turned out to be, but 45-year-old squirrel is kind of embarrassed by teenage squirrel, so, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and, you know, I'm nowhere near, what is it, 77, so I've got 32 more years till I get there, so I may change yet more. Uh, and then there was... Uh, an interesting article, I won't say it's like super scientific, but uh, it was about the thinking error. So I was talking about vaccine denials. This article is about the thinking error at the root of science denial. Because in the United States, that's like a big industry denying science. We've got these creationists. We've got flat earthers becoming more common. We've got the anti-vaxxers. Uh, all kinds of people just flat out denying science. What do scientists know? I got my Bible. And uh, one of the things that this article talks about is just the inability to do nuance. It's all or nothing, black and white thinking. And most of the world is very nuanced. Yeah, maybe you identify as liberal or identify as conservative, but then you start picking those views apart and you're like, oh, yeah, I've got a big variety of views here. You know, I... I used to identify as conservative. I used to identify as very right wing. Uh, I used to identify as evangelical Christian. And yet, I was totally in favor of gay marriage. 
I had no problem with uh, transgender, uh, you know, things that aren't typically in that group, you know. So is that nuance thing. And you go investigate people. I don't care how hardcore you they are. You will find that nuance. But uh, people don't like that nuance. And, and that is at the heart of science denial, you know, if you... If the science is contradicting what you darn well know to be true or believe to be true, then science has got it wrong. It's a conspiracy or something. Um, and uh, it's an older article, but I, I posted one. It's uh, about the war between science and religion. And uh, the interesting thing there is they really look at two different realms. The problem has been that especially on the part of religion, they try to jump into the science side. You know, hey, we got the book of Genesis telling us how the world was created, so your evolution, Big Bang stuff, uh, uh, uh. Um, and, the, but really, religion looks at, should be looking at the supernatural realm. Uh, science does not look at the supernatural realm. If you can't test it, science doesn't care about it. Uh, I had a discussion recently with somebody who was upset that I had a evolution poster on my wall in my classroom, and it's like, dude, you're finally, I, you know, I finally said this, and not in these words, but dude, you're Catholic. The Catholic Church has no problem with evolution, and uh, this person, of course, didn't believe me, but whatever, I'm right. He was wrong. <laughs> um. So it doesn't have to be a war. It's just a different, different realms. The supernatural isn't something you can really test. Things that you look at in science are things you can test. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I was a religious person for years, and I had no problem with the evolution. So, uh, of course, I came from a pretty liberal denomination. You know, I was... Uh, baptized Presbyterian, and not one of the conservative versions. I was uh, Presbyterian USA, which is pretty liberal. But uh, anyway, I just thought that was an article worth worth including. And I guess I've gone through almost everything. Uh, the only one I didn't get to is the original fake news network. I, uh, well, it's about the U.S. overthrowing a Central American government. We'll put it that way. I just feel like I think I can do more with that article uh, than a quick mention at the end of a pens in use. So uh, I'm going to save it. I uh, I feel like it would be material for a driving video, but it is it is an interesting read, and it's a part of history that typically isn't taught in U.S. history classes. Like I didn't know any of this. When I was in school, you learn this stuff later. Uh, and you find out that, oh, the U.S. doesn't have its hands as clean as uh, people would like to think it does. So, uh, yeah, definitely a worthwhile read if you're into that kind of thing. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. You know, This is a short commentary. I've got a beautiful day. I've, if you can't tell, you, it is so overexposed out there because it is almost 6 at night. And it's still really bright out there to the point that uh, I can't film it yet with this camera. So uh, I want to enjoy a little bit more daylight. So doggone it, I'm going to enjoy some more daylight. And I'll edit this together after it starts to get dark. I don't care. I want to enjoy my daylight. So I want to thank you for watching. And if videos like this interest you where you talk about fountain pens, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you gotten the COVID shot yet? You know, I've got my first one, Moderna, because where I live, there's no way they can store Pfizer. And i uh, got my second one in a few weeks. Of course, I get it right now because I'm a teacher, so I'm at the end of that category of, uh, what are they called? Frontline workers? Necessary workers? Something like that. So, anyway, let us know down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.